when creating a dashboard having lots of visualizations, you run into the problem of fitting all your charts in one single screen. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to multiply the space of your dashboard by using a combo box. So let's dive in. Here is the work situation. I have a data set that shows over 600,000 trackers. This data set could be in a worksheet in the same workbook, but I saved it in the data model and I created a pivot table out of this data set. Let's go back to Excel and look at the pivot table. In this pivot table, I can see the total sales by category. I can also see the total cost, the discount, the return, the net sales, the gross profit, the percentage of return, and then I created in column I a calculation. It's an if function with a max function that shows the highest return. And in column J, I created a similar calculation with an if and min function to show the category with minimum return. I want to visualize my data by creating 10 charts. Some of the charts cannot be created directly from the pivot table. Then I created a reference table below it, and this reference table just refers, it shows equal A4 and so on. So it just refers to the pivot table. So it's dynamic as well. When the pivot table changes, then my reference table will change as well. Out of the reference table, I created the 10 chart that I want. Here are the different charts, sales by category net sales by category, discount and returns, discount by category, return by category, some other column charts and combo charts and a scatter plot chart for the highest return and the lowest return. I'm not talking about creating these charts in this tutorial. I'm focusing on the problem I have. How can I fit all these charts in just part of my dashboard? I have a limited space and I want to multiply this space. Each one of the charts is sitting on a named range. I named the ranges before creating the charts. And here is a list of the named ranges that I created. Sales column, sales tree, net sales bar, and so on. Let me show you the named ranges. I hit Alt F10 to open the selection pane. I'm going to hide all the visualization. And now I can see the ranges that I have named. This is sales column, sales tree. If I go to the name box and I select, let's say, discount pie, then it recognizes the range by its name. This is a key point in creating the functionality. And let me show you the finished project first. I go to the dashboard worksheet where I created my functionality. In just a little space of my dashboard, I want to show the 10 charts because I have some other visualizations to create. So I created this beautiful combo box. And when I change my selection and I say discount pie, then everything updates and I can see the discount by category pie chart. If I select a different one, let's say lowest return, then I see the scatter plot chart that shows the lowest return. Now let me show you how I created this functionality in three steps. As I mentioned, I have 10 named ranges upon which the charts are sitting. You can check the names of the ranges in the drop list of the name box, and here is a list of the named ranges. I can reveal all the charts by clicking on Show All in the selection pane. When I click on Show All, now I can close the selection pane. At any time, you can bring it back by using the shortcut Alt F10. I start by creating my combo box. This is step number one. It requires naming this range. I go to the formula tab of the ribbon. I click on create from selection. Top row is checked. I hit OK. Then all these named ranges have been named collectively, chart names. Now I go to the developer tab. To add the developer tab, you can right click on any tab, select customize the ribbon and check the developer. I already have the developer tab. Then I click on it. And in the controls group, I click on the down arrow for insert and I select the second option in the top row, which is a combo box. I click and drag to position my combo box. And then I want to add the elements to the combo box. Then I click on properties. In the properties dialog box, for the input range, I'll be typing chart names. And I want to link it to a cell. So I click in the cell link. But look at this very simple and important trick. 
If I click on a cell, I will see the cell reference, but I want it to be preceded by the sheet name because I'm going to move the combo box to the dashboard worksheet. Then I click on the dashboard worksheet. It adds the names of the worksheet. I replace it by the other worksheet name. And then I click on cell 01. Cell 01 in the camera worksheet will be linked to the combo box. I hit OK. And now let me test. I deselect the combo box, click on the down pointing arrow, select a chart, and my combo box is working fine. The next step is to create a defined name in memory. This defined name will be looking at the number returned by the combo box. And accordingly, it will be returning one of the named ranges. Then it's doing exactly the opposite of the combo box. The combo box takes a name, returns a number. The choose function takes a number, returns the name. To save some time, and instead of typing inside the choose function, I'm going to put all these names in one single string separated by commas. This is a text join function. I type equal text join, and then I hit tab. What's your delimiter? It will be a comma, double quote, comma, double quote, and then another comma to move to the next argument. Would you like to ignore empty cells? Yes. Then I skip this argument by typing a second comma, and then I select the range, which is the range showing the different named ranges. And then I close the bracket for the text join function, and here is the result. These are just the list of names separated by commas. I take it and I copy it and I paste values. Control C to copy. And then in another cell, I want to paste values. The new shortcut is Control Shift V. I copy all the names. These are the names of the ranges upon which the charts are sitting. Control C. I hit escape. Now it's time to create my choose function in a defined name. I click on formulas. I click on define name. And I want to name it, let's say, my charts. For the refers to box, I type equal choose. And then I open bracket. The choose function requires a number. This number is returned by the linked cell of the combo box. I type a comma, and according to this number, it will be returning one of the different names that I created with the text join function. Then I paste, control V, I close the bracket for the choose function. Now I hit OK, and I finish step two. Let's copy this combo box. I click outside, I press control and click on the combo box, control X to cut, and then I go to the dashboard worksheet. I'll be positioning it here, so let's delete this text. I want to position it here, control V. You can resize and reposition your combo box the way you like. And now the final step is to use the camera tool. The camera tool takes a dynamic picture of any cell you select. So if I select a cell, any cell you like, just to test the camera tool, I click on the down arrow for the quick access toolbar. I click on more commands. I want to switch from popular commands to all commands. And here is the camera tool. I select it and I move it to my quick access toolbar and then I hit OK. This cell showing drop list is selected. So if I click on the camera tool and then I click and drag to position the dynamic picture returned by the camera tool, then it reads whatever we have. If I change the text and I type my name, Nabil, then the moment I hit enter, the picture returned by the camera tool is dynamic. What if I delete the reference of this picture, which shows right now is a reference, and I type the named range storing the choose function, my charts. The moment I hit enter, all the magic will happen. And here you go. I can resize my chart and then test it. If I change my selection from the combo box, I click on highest return, then the chart changes. If I select lowest return, if I select discount pi, everything is beautiful and dynamic. I was able to visualize hundreds of thousands of records and as many charts as you want in the least amount of space by using the functionality of named ranges, the choose function, the combo box, and the camera tool. If you found value in this tutorial, Give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel. 
to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.